How's it going, everybody? It's Jimmy Perry from Powerful. website. You go to resource for all beginning powerful information. I'm very sorry if my mouth or my words are gone garbled. I have like some skittles, so I'm kind of eating those. I'm very unprofessional. <laughs> it's funny. All right, today I'm here to answer uh, five FAQs I found on the squat. They're kind of random, but I'm still going to answer them. Um, so. The first question is, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that was weird. One, two, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right, can I squat every day? I kind of wrote a post on this, but basically, I mean, you can do whatever you want to your body, but I wouldn't suggest it depending on, like if you're squatting heavy, if you're a power lifter, why would you want to, you're not going to make gains if you're squatting heavy every day. That's like common sense. Um, the same thing goes for, well, bodybuilders, you can do whatever you want, but I mean, it's going to just, you're going to be in a lot of pain, and I don't know if everybody, like, you need to still rest, so, and still allocate energy to other movements, like the bench, or whatever, like, whatever, like, uh, whatever body part, so, chest, triceps, whatever, you're going to be burned out, your head's going to feel like crap, I don't know if you want to do that to yourself, I'm sure there's other more efficient ways to lift weights, and obviously this is all research, but basically it's the same stuff, I wouldn't do it, I squat once a week, um, and that's because that works for my body. I can't do five or three days a week squatting. It hurts. I don't make any gains. Um, mm-mm. so just take a few things into consideration, like fatigue and f- fatigue and recovery, and your capacity to recover. Um, and then you know, do what you're gonna do. So I would suggest testing it out, like you know, seeing what works for you, see what gets you optimal gains, and moving with it. Next question: Are squats enough to train the legs? No, I mean, because there are other, like, movements. There are, what I found and what, obviously, what I found on the internet, like, none of this come from my head, obviously. What we found, what people have found and what I'm just reciting to you guys is that, especially for powerlifting, it's very easy to start cause with, with, with barbell mo- or um, compound movements, it's very easy to have, to not, to have imbalance, muscle imbalances that just go unchecked, like, the, like you don't know about, right? I know for myself, before when I was squatting, I wouldn't activate my glutes. So it was very quiet, depending. Like, I wouldn't, my glutes weren't activating. I wasn't using my, I wasn't really using my hamstrings that much. It was all quads. Um, and that's why I wasn't moving a lot of weight. It was hurting. I wasn't hinging a lot, hinging well. Which is why my knees were hurting. So we need other assistant movements to help us, um, help me figure. I need that, I need the assistant movements to help me figure it out. But what was going on, because was, I was in pain. So, in short, no, I had assistance movements so I could t- make up for the things that the squat, just squatting wasn't doing, wasn't fixing, and I suggest you do that too. I mean, that's what I got this from, like, other people, like, other, like, well, well-known people. So, I mean, that's up to you if you listen. Um, how do I get good form at squatting? Well, for first, you squat. <laughs> the only way you get better at something is by doing it. Two... I put a list of things in the article of what you should do, and I got this from other people. Like, I know how to do this tacitly. I understand. Implicit. It's kind of implied for me, like, how to move my body because, it, you know, it makes sense. Like, I do what feels good, and I do what allows me to move weight and what, you know, is qualif- what qualifies. Now, but this has this list that I put on the um, article goes over exactly what you want to do when you squat. I can, I'm going to obviously link out to it so you can know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, it talks you about how to point your toes, how do you how you want to bend at the knees, et cetera, et cetera. It's very it's very thorough. Um, now, why do a lot of people squat at the gym? Is the next question. Well, for one, it's a well known movement, and that if another thing is, then this is how I think about everything, and I think it's a lot of how a lot of businesses, whatever, think about things. If you aren't, if something doesn't work, you change it. The squat has been around for centuries. There's a reason why it's stuck. There's a reason why people do it. One, because it's popular. Two, because it works. It works for hypertrophy, like for strength, whatever. Like, or not strength, because obviously you get, you get strong in the movement. You don't, you know. But that's different. But glutes, um, hip, 
this is the mu muscle that it works. It works a lot of muscles. So it works the glutes, hips, thighs, vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, hamstrings, and quadriceps. Can't remember what those middle two were. So I'm not going to front like I do. I don't remember. But yeah, it works a lot of muscles and it, it saves time. That's what I think of compound movements. You don't have to focus, spend time focusing on a bunch of things. And it builds a base. Compound movements build like a base, an all-around base for all those muscle groups. So when you start doing isolation movements, you're just building off of what you've been working on already in, with the compound movements. It's very simple. Um, then, last question is, what are the pros and cons of doing front squat and only no back squats? Well, the, um, the benefits that front squats offer are your quads will look, because it's very quad dependent. Um, your quads will look amazing. They focus on the upper back and core muscles. Um, it has a slight shoulder carryover, this is, which is why I stopped doing them. Um, and if you do snatch grip, your wrists will be very flexible, which is another reason why I stopped doing them. My wrists were in pain, and my I, I, it, no, I would rather like I would rather focus my pain on something else. <laughs> and you do what you do, but that's not me. Um, obviously, there's a few downsides. It's not you can't go as heavy as your back squat, and you won't be as uh, you won't be able to you won't be able to develop as much strength in your hips. Very straightforward. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for this FAQ. <laughs> I got the pink shirt on. And I don't know why I said that. But hey, you guys will see me at the next one. I'll be doing these for the immediate and not immediate future because I, you know. Why not? Also, the Black Book of Powerlifting is released on Kindle. I'll be doing a voice uh, release of it also and a paperback version. It basically goes over everything that powerlifters need to know. Well, I, I didn't know when I started powerlifting and that it was available on the web, but just was so scarce, so uh, widespread or spread out that, you know, you just didn't know about it, right? So, I put that all in one book and it really, I would have made it free, but I couldn't. It's 99 cents. Um, yeah, check it out and I'll continue to be creating things for powerlifters, beginning powerlifters, powerlifters, whatever. The goal is to just spread information and make things easier on you guys, so... Yeah, so subscribe to the channel and like and comment on this video. Uh, and if you in, if you're interested in it, go check the page out that goes over all these FAQs and you know give me questions if you have any. And yeah, you hear from me at the next one. Peace.